Uh, we'll move on immediately to our next speaker, uh, Dr. Yahya Al Marzuki. Uh, Dr. Yahya has obtained his uh, doctor degree from Bradford University in the UK. Uh, he, was, uh, he worked for Abu Dhabi company for onshore oil operations for over 16 years. Uh, while in ETCO, he led various initiatives uh, such as the Career Development Center, Leadership Development Model, and implementation of e-learning and blending, uh, blended learning, uh, to name a few. Uh, Dr. Yahya served on the executive committee of Tautin program and later as a chairman of the executive committee. Uh, he also serves as a member of the executive board of the UAE University, College of Business and Economy. In 2009, Dr. Yahya joined Tawazon. Tawazon is a strategic investment firm focused on the long-term development of Abu Dhabi's industrial, manufacturing, and technology capabilities and knowledge transfer with a specific focus on the defense sector. He is currently the Director of Strategic Learning and Development at Tawazun. We are honored uh, to welcome Dr. Yahya. His address is entitled Education for Building a Knowledge-Based Economy, Strategic and Futuristic Perspectives in the Context of the UAE. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Sabahkum alaikum al khair. Good morning. I think uh, I'm allergic to podium. Number one, because they are not height friendly. So <laughs> there you have it. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much. I would like to congratulate. Uh, uh, Closer? Okay. Uh, congratulate the. Uh, Khalifa University team for putting this uh, program together. Uh, I come from uh, Tawazon. Uh, Tawazon is a commercial arm of uh, Offset, uh, Offset Program Bureau established in 1992. Uh, and our mandate is to diversify economy away from the oil and gas into the manufacturing. And that is a huge task. And we are currently in very infancy period. If and, and inshallah we will, according to the plan, we will be the sole uh, company uh, in the MENA country that by 2020 we will create about 17,000 jobs in the United Arab Emirates. And our strategy is to take the job to the people, not center it and concentrate it in the city of Abu Dhabi and bring everybody from Ras Al Khaimah, Fujira to here. And, and losing a lot of our kids and daughters uh, to the road. So that is a change in our strategy which was taking place three years ago. Our challenge, and I, I was putting, trying to put some slides together last night. Uh, uh, here's a revelation. Uh, it worked. And see, what, what am I going to talk about? You know, is it about only the technology? Is it about disseminating knowledge and using only the technology? And how do we bridge, my uh, colleague uh, Fahim eloquently talked about, how do we create these bridges among people? How do we interact? You saw the circle as we were going to school the, uh, the whole time. Not me, not me. I wasn't born there. Yeah. So how, how do we disseminate? How do we not become ethnocentrism, my way or highway? Yeah, as a human being, how do we operate in this uh, global village? The days of I'm alone, I'm hugging, and everything is con confidential, is, I think is over. Uh, collaboration is the name of the game. And not everyone you know, can have uh, everything. Life is too short for all of us to make all the mistakes. And that is not the intention. We have learned it in, in a hard way uh, at Tawazan. And we are very proud to be associated as a gold member here uh, with this uh, symposium. Uh, you will see our name in a, in a technology forum, in Emirates Skills, uh, in Science Festival. Because what, what we lack, I think, is smart student. Not that they are not smart. I think sometimes systematically we destroy the smartness in the classroom. And, and how, do we, uh, how do we get out of that vicious circle that we are going on in, in that uh, era? Now, I, I think uh, UAE, uh, with our uh, leadership, has done a, a, a quantum leap 
uh, in next week we will be celebrating our uh, uh, 42nd. So it's, it's a, in a short time, I think we have come a long way. And, and, uh, and that's uh, progress is to uh, our leadership. Now, when again, one more time, if I, if I want to, then how do, we, how do we create this job in a technical area? How do we entice a student to go into the STEM and study science, technology, engineering, and math? Because that is the area that we are creating job in the future. I was at UA University speaking at the INJEX, the engineering exhibition a while back. And I spoke to the kids, and I told them what are the career opportunities for you, for you in a technical area. And after my presentation of 15 minutes, they all came and swapped me. They told me, you are two years too late. I wish I had this information when I was in high school. So when Dr. Abdul Latif Shamsi yesterday talked about that we need to target the the KG or elementary school and high school. And, and that is the whole thinking uh, in the circle of education. We held a, a, an, an education forum earlier with Dr. Tal Larson, Dr. Martin Zada from Masdar University, uh, UA University, and we debated how this future, how do we entice these kids? In the late 80s, oil and gas, they were downsizing, right sizing, business process reengineering, and they got rid of a lot of uh, their staff do more with less. And guess what happened? At the time when Bill Gates was paying top dollar, you know, uh, information technology was on the top of the pyramid, and the kids, they changed their major to non-technical. Today, we made a lot of money and we want to cross border and sell our product somewhere else. Guess what came back to haunt us? Human capital. And that is my presentation. I tried to share with you some thought from the industry perspective, and it's not going to be so much about the IT, so forgive me. I try to as much, Dr. Summer called me, he said, try to make it relevant to the technology. I said, I'll do my best. So with that, oh. now, if you look at the, if you look at the evolutions of, of, uh, uh, of economics, all over the world and, and, and in, the, in, in the mankind, you see that in the past, the land dominated a society, a community, a country. Those who owned the biggest land, they even impacted the constitution of a nation, of a country. So the land was, you, it was a, more of a comparative advantages rather than competitive advantages. I compare myself with you, I have a bigger land and I have a bigger farm and therefore I dominate. And that was the time, you know, where everybody was trying to expand their, their land. And then it comes a number of labors. I have thousands, 100,000, 200,000, and therefore I am the dominant in the society. Gone through that, it became the industrial revolution and industrial uh, technology. And then became capital, money, resources, physical as well as the as the money and today is human capital and it's not anymore a luxury it's more of necessity it's not that uh, we cannot afford not to uh, focus on human in Tawazan I you know my CEO tell me not to reveal that and every time I tell him the next uh, conference I will not but here I am again saying 8% of the total payroll is spent on human capital and I challenge any organization yeah. Last time I said that in Singapore, one guy came to me and said, by the way, ours is 11. I said, when I go back, I need to revisit that figure again. Yeah. So how do we, with the, if you look at the competitive versus comparative advantages, if, we, if somebody has a physical, you have the land, you have the labors, but there is no human resources. There is no human capital to execute your plan. Yeah, if we partner with Ankebut and we want to go and expand somewhere, you know, in other country, cross border and take our business out, what do we need? We need the human capital. And we, we need the human capital that understand other people's culture. There are times we were in the in University of Gothenburg, Germany, and, and the talk was how do we create an international mindset? 
why is it that a, a person who is very successful as a CEO in a country has generated a lot of income for, for the shareholders and paid a lot of dividends, and yet when we take him to another nation, another country, that success is not there. So culture is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, an, is an issue. If it's not exposed to, if you don't understand other people's culture, and, and so in sitting in the, in the classroom, sitting in the, in, the, in the comfort of your home and learning at your own time, at your own pace, that's not a bad thing. But I think that's not the only thing. That's what I'm trying to get across. In UAE, where are we now? Uh, in the past, we were driven purely by energy sector, uh, limited educations. We didn't have except one or, or two university as uh, is best. No focus on the STEM, a lot of business administration, and we are becoming to saturation stage. All business administration are occupied by Emiratis, and our intention is to close down the Tautin Council and Tautin program. What do I mean by that? There won't be a UAE national looking for a job. And employment bring it down, if not zero, very close to that. That's the intention. What is today? We are driven by other sector, service sector, insurance, managing, we have uh, quite a lot of higher education established, increased focus on STEM, at least we started talking about it. I don't know if the last two weeks you participated in science festival in the Corniche, in the Ain, Western region. Uh, we, the UAE skills is coming up and, and math move you, we are trying to adapt and entice kids in a fun way. We were at Harvard Business School and talking about this, you know, how this generation X how do they learn X, Y, Z, call it, uh, you know, wh what you may. How, and the lady was in that group, and she was saying, when I was growing up, and I did something bad my, my parents didn't like, what they used to tell me, go to your room. That was a huge punishment, and I hate it. And today, I tell my kids, go to your room. They said, yes, mom, can I not come out for the whole day? Because all the gadgets are there, yeah? So how do we connect to this mindset? Yeah, I developed a program with my team when I was in the oil and gas, and we thought that is the best program that uh, it could fly. We put our best experience, and guess what? It was not successful. And then we say, let's get a few kids who are just graduated and joined us the first year and put it with the team so they can, put, they can participate in articulation, design, the content, as well as the delivery of the program. And what happened? It worked. First thing they were thinking, okay, can I do it from my mobile? Can I do it for, for my, you know, how mobile it is? Can I do it while I'm on the plane? So the mindset, we cannot prog develop a program with the old mindset for the future generation unless we adopt and adapt. And that's the, that was our experience. Now, the word index, look at the four pillars when they are looking at the when they are evaluating a knowledge-based economy. They say, okay, is this, what about the economic incentive they look at uh, of, of that country? They look at uh, education and human capital. They look at innovation, and then they look at information and communication. And we said, you know, we looked at that intensively, and we said, okay, how, where, and then they allocate numbers and figures and index. And we went, I'm not going to bore you with it, but we went down to our own organization. Where do we stand? How do we calculate the intangible? How do we calculate the tacit knowledge that is in our mind? How do we capture the tacit knowledge, make it explicit, and put a process in place to disseminate this knowledge to the next generation? And what value, what is the return on investment we put on that? And, 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 but just to give you on the, on the UAE, uh, this is uh, the World Bank, um, and I have extracted it uh, from uh, the internet. And we stand at 3.94. Looking at the life of the nations, that's, that's pretty good. That's looking pretty good. Are we there? No. The answer is no. Are our education is well aligned with the industry and serving the, the, the industry and society what they require, the outcome? The answer is no. Is university and industry getting close together? The answer is yes. Are we creating program advisory committee across the board? The answer is yes. 
So arrows are pointing in the right direction. But we are far from being there. Far. Now, we talked about the UAE, you know, in the future. Where are we going to be? Is, is it going to be focused on, on computer? Is it going to be the student-centric? And, and in a you know, few years back, we focused so much on the classroom and building this beautiful building with bringing the high-tech. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm not uh, uh, being uh, uh, pessimistic about it. But we forgot the teachers. Yeah. You, need, you, you, you need to bring a teacher who are passionate about learning who are passionate about teaching. The teacher, not as the teacher, one way, I have few slides, you sit there until I finish. The teacher as a facilitator. The teacher as a learner. And that's the a, that's a, that's a future, and Dr. Mughira and his team are, uh, are, are working on behind the scene. The future, diversification of capability in manufacturing, health, and others, world-class higher education, Focus on STEM in a fun way. In a, in a, in a fun way, we are working with few uh, uh, international organizations. I'll name a few of them. I hope the those that I not mention, if I forget, forgive me. But with Boeing, Raytheon, Rheinmetall, Airbus, and we are working with them. How do we to get on the you know obtain their experience? They have gone through it. How do we entice our kids to study in, to STEM? You know, reaching out, my colleague uh, Fahim said, reaching out to the parents. They spend quite a lot of time at home. How do we educate that? We took a, you know, I, they told me to become a president of the tennis club in one of the company. I said, okay. I was playing tennis, and they said, okay. And when I took over, they had two, two um, uh, championships going on, or two clubs, a UA Nationals and non-UA Nationals. And my kids were very good. He was, Omar was on the top in that category. But when I put him with that, he became number 15. So what I'm trying to say here, you know, mingling people together, putting the, of, you know, all of us together in, in, in one bucket, reaching out to one another, understanding each other's culture. Four minutes, two minutes, or four? Three, OK, good. Okay. <laughs> So I have to, uh, I, I will, I will uh, conclude uh, shortly. So this is the, the, the future, yeah? I mean, if you look at, if you look at, you know, how do we make the alignment between the educations and industry, between academia and academia? How do we, you know, we were, we were uh, discussing, and I shared that a while back with uh, Dr. Todd, that we need to create an incubator that we need to create a techno park, and we are in the process as a Tawazan to build that for the nation as part of our corporate social responsibility and our needs, and our needs. I must uh, emphasize on that. And we need to create, you know, I went to, the, again, to environmental uh, uh, symposium at UAE University. Some of the ideas, they made it all the way to, to prototyping, were there. And then they don't know these kids where to take it the next. Where can I get some help? How can I take it from concept to combat, from concept to commercialization? They don't have experience yet. Somebody has to come in and help them out. And then they are so reserved to sharing it with you. And I said, why are you not telling me? He said, well, I'm afraid you're saying it won't work. And two years later, you'll come and steal my idea. How do I register my intellectual property, the IP? So we are uh, in the process of establishing that techno park that people can come in and we can give them some advice. And in some case, we will link them with the Khalifa Fund to get the funding and, and we also provide them with some marketing. We and the industry at large. In the comparative, again, I don't want to dwell in on each one. This one, you have seen it. But again, it is about focus on quality of product, innovation, driven by entrepreneur, not government. Entrepreneurs need to, to drive that. Kids that are coming out of school, they're not going to say, where am I going to work, but how many jobs I'm going to create. Yeah, those entrepreneurs, 
And what are their mindset of this entrepreneur? How do we align the curriculum to, to, to suit the mindset of the entrepreneur? How do we create that from local to global vision and then driven by? Now, a smart education, again, as an enabler. Uh, my colleague Fahim uh, mentioned that. But it's not only that. It's not about bringing system, distributing iPad or mini pad. It's about culture change. And that culture change, we need to take it very seriously. Yeah? I, I put a counter on some of the program that we launch in the company. And the counter did not, the first three months, did not look very good as far as utilization concerned. What we did, we brought the latest technology, we increased the bandwidth, but we did not give people time to go and oh, we say, oh, you learn at your own time, at your own pace. He said, well, is there any supermarket that I can go and buy time? You know, with everything is firefighting and everybody is too busy. So culture change is about culture change. Again, at the, at the high school education level, we need to encourage creativity, language skills, and then a smart, you, I put it in different color, it goes across, cut across the high school, elementary school, in a postgraduate. In technical engineering, we need to expose people to quality, innovation mounts, my, mindset, R and the aptitude at this stage, focus on new capabilities such as manufacturing, lifelong learning, continuous learning, and then again, in, in the R and D at the higher education, collaboration is the name of the game. Uh, we need to collaborate together. Industry need to sponsor, and the university they need to solve society and community problem and issues and bring about the solutions. Again, that requires in the organization that you have a, a good human resources, good environment for people to flourish, to realize their potential. Yeah? yeah. This hierarchy in the organization is not going to last. And if those who are very steep pyramid, I don't think there is any, much of innovation going on in those organizations. We need to get out of silos. Uh, university who they do research, they need to circulate their research to the industry and get some feedback, not among their colleagues in the, in the academia, okay, this time I pat your back, next time you pat my back and we get it published, with all due respect, yeah? This is the future again, I'm repeating that, this is my last slide, so, so, I'm, uh, so I'll be out of here. Again, one more time, I want to focus the collaboration, uh, is, is, a, is a key to our, our success. We don't have all the capability in one place, one more time, life is too short for all of us to make the mistakes. Uh, I'll be here for the next uh, 10, 15 minutes. And if you have any question, I don't know if there is, uh, they allow me to take any, any question, any comments, any concern you may have. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me. Thank you.